Okay. Hold on, hold on. Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. Not really happy to be here because we just got our asses kicked by this Mustang, which you'll probably see. Maybe you'll see, maybe you won't. Uh, we're now doing a different car two minutes later from getting our asses kicked. So if you, if I seem frustrated, I am. Yeah, just, so, just put a Ford logo above his head. <laughs> so we're doing some other truck yeah. that has major issues. Yes. Give me the brief. Brief, okay, so. So it could be 49, that it works, could be 52. That works for an intro because we have a charging system problem. The customer complained, car stalls, and then he has to jump it. That's no longer the case. It starts back up for you every time, but he still has a stalling problem, right? Bogging. It's, well, it, it's not stalling on me, but okay. it's when it goes in, when the check engine light finally comes on yeah. is what I've figured. Yeah. We, we then, have, it, then it shuts, goes into open loop. It fixes the the injectors at 3.3 milliseconds yeah. and but you look at the o2 sensors and they're all at like they're, 0.3 like they're at 30 millivolts 40 millivolts snap throttle i can get them to respond so they work right right all stuff we're going to do but the point is but it would pop, pop, when it's like you're popping under load well, popping and, under load would make sense for your fuel pump low pressure but it but, don't do that when i clear the code as soon as I clear the code and then it goes back into but closed you watched loop. Your, you watched your fuel pressure drop I to did. 35. I did. It shouldn't do that. So but we know it, we have a pump do issue. It right off idle. My it question, won't even accept But gas. my question for you, because we can cover all this with them and they're all completely lost now. Okay. <laughs> Whenever you, uh, when I talked to you on the phone, our concern was with fuel pressure good at idle when we don't have a volume loss, you still had very, very positive fuel trim numbers and pegged lean O2s. So to me, I think we're well, no, the, when it's in closed loop with very positive long and short term fuel trim, my O2s are working. They're not stuck. But it's very positive. That's the point. Very positive. Yes. But once it decides to shut off, okay, I don't and care about that. Limp, but the then it's negative. But the point is, with good fuel pressure in closed loop, you have very, very positive fuel pressure mm. or very, very positive trim numbers. So mm -hmm. I think, I think, you you had an alternator problem. You have a vacuum leak and you have a fuel pump problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, I, that's what I think, yeah. that's what we're trying to prove. Yes. And the customer, uh, you know, maybe thought all of this was one problem and it's not. And that's what we're gonna prove for, for Danner, hopefully, and that we won't get our asses kicked the way that this stupid 86 Mustang <laughs> just did. Uh, we're not done with it. Hopefully you guys will see it. You, you guys will see it and you'll see me, you know, pulling my hair out a little bit. Anyway, give me the keys. You know, a little bit hesitant to test drive this first because uh, with the engine cold, like these are known for intake vacuum leaks that only reveal themselves when the engine's cold. So let's see what we can do here. Oh, come on. I don't know. I hate when they ask me the year. Just self-identify. Come on. Another old piece of crap that we're working on. I know. I'm sorry. I'm frustrated. <laughs> that last car just really made me angry. 11 of 06 is the build date, so it's an 07. This is not the Vortec fuel injection system, if any of you are wondering. We were talking about fuel pressure and stuff. So codes were cleared, so we're not gonna necessarily have good stuff. I got a TPS fault here, too. I don't know if how Danner was mentioned. I think he mentioned that. 171, 174 are there. Let's see our freeze frame data. Let's see when these set. 174 freeze frame. Look at that one first. Coolant 156. Engine load 19%. 12% throttle. Yeah, short term, long term, buried. 30 on long terms, 23 on short terms. And this is at idle. That that looks like a vacuum leak. That's during the warm up period, 156. And then he's mentioning fuel pump and fuel pressure and popping and banging. Or popping, you know, driving it under load. So same thing. It's set at the same time. 156 degrees. This is the 171 code. 156 on the coolant. 600 RPM. 30, 30 on the long terms. Short terms, 23. That's that's classic vacuum leak conditions when you see that. I think he's got a vacuum leak and it needs a fuel pump. And had a charging system problem. All at the same time. So, I mean, how much of a pain is that for a garage owner when you don't know the whole history of the car and how long it's been doing X, Y, and Z? 
he's had multiple issues on this car for a long time. These all, these don't all just happen at the same time. Long crank time, which is absolutely an indication of a fuel pump problem. Now it could just be a fuel pump problem and Danner was wrong on his spec and what he looked up. Let's, let's look at some numbers here. It feels pretty bad right now as far as the leak uh, or the, the way that it's running. You see, you see trims are, are climbing, short terms climbing, long terms are at 24. Mass airflow is awfully high, like nine grams per second. This is a 5.3, it should be around five grams per second at idle. TPS is 19%, that's open very far. And that could explain the math data, but it's super lean. It, look at the front O2s are like pegged lean right there. Yeah. Now the trims are coming back up. You know, it's moving now, but it's still real bad. You're talking total trim of looking at bank one, add those two together, you're talking like 40%, more than 40%. This one's more lean. Bank one is more lean than bank two. But the problem is there at a higher RPM. I'll come back down to idle. Pretty evenly bad. <laughs> All right, let's do, do a quick test drive. We can look at our O2s at wide open throttle. This is too old to have a fuel pressure measurement on the scan tool, so we'll have to do some manual stuff. Wide open throttle, full lean, surge, surge. <laughs> full lean the whole time. I mean, I know I know my brother's hesitant to put a pump in this because he feels like there's other issues going on and he might be right. I, th I really think the other issue is he, he also has a vacuum leak. Wide open, full lean on the O2s, classic, classic fuel starvation, the way that it you can feel it hesitating, surging. Uh, we'll kind of look at the math grams per second now on this one. Yeah, it looked pretty good. I, I saw at one point like 170 grams per second. Every engine's different. We can do a VE measurement, take those numbers, calculate it. We don't need to. Danner kind of already did the preliminary work for us in that he saw the fuel pressure gauge drop off. So we'll, we'll verify that, but we definitely um, have, have a fuel delivery problem, extremely long crank time. Fixed lean O2 at wide open throttle. Fuel pressure verified by my brother that drops off under load. We'll have to show that course to be um, diligent a, a fuel pump power and ground check should be carried out to make sure that you know you don't have low voltage there let's get a mileage check here what are we talking about yeah uh, 232,000 miles this has on it yeah there's your pop through the intake here the pop Yeah, that's, that's what engines do when they starve for fuel. Yeah, it's fixed lean right now, too. Oh, we're in, we're in a forced open loop right now. See, the short terms are at zero. All right, um, just to address this real quick, let me get my loop status in here and show you guys that this is in open loop. Yes, and the reason I knew that, so you see where it says open right here, 
reason reason I knew that is you just watch your your short terms. When your short terms are fixed, um, you're you're in open loop, and the computer is now running in an open loop mode. And this is where your O2s too are fixed lean; they're not moving. But if I snap the throttle, we want to try to drive them rich if we can. There you go. So just some quick rapid snaps. We can drive the O2s rich, so it's not an O2 problem. Very easy to identify that. You know, no reason to throw oxygen sensors at it like some uh, people would do or parts stores would sell you. We have an absolute uh, lean condition that is occurring right now. Um, and is it just a fuel pump or is it a fuel pump and a vacuum leak is what we're gonna verify. This shouldn't be too hard to finish this up. All right, fuel pressure next. Danner's on the phone. First view is there's no oil cap. It's missing. And it looks to be like it's been missing because of the, the oil debris that you can kind of see down here on the side of the block. Yeah. So I don't know if Danner noticed that or not. While I'm waiting, let's verify where our fuel pump relay is because I'd like to do a, me a measurement from up here rather than crawling underneath it would be wonderful. Thank you, GM, for giving me a lovely fuse box. Ford, take note. Fuel pump relay is... Should be this guy right here. It's, looks relatively new. And then... Let's see, fuel pump. Where's fuel pump? 20 amp, number 20. That one right there. Cool. My AES Wave U test terminal kit. You should just get that. I've never seen you use it before. Uh, <laughs> I use it all the time. What are you talking about? This should be my fuel pump circuit. So we can do a current measurement from up here. And that'll dictate what we do down below. If anything, I'm hoping to avoid that. Just doing a quick amperage measurement because I'm waiting on my brother to get me his fuel pressure gauge. I did not bring mine today. And I'm certainly not going to look through his shop to find his. All right. If I identified this right, we should see a fuel pump pattern on here. We do. Absolutely. You know what's awesome about this pattern right now? I do not have to crawl underneath this truck and check fires and grounds. As far as fuel pump current goes and voltage, I mean, we're, we're averaging about 10 amps of current flow. That just makes me so happy right now. Average amperage is nine and a half amps. Uh, this is very similar to my truck. The setup, mine's the six liter, 2009. What did I say, this is a 2007 or eight? Yeah, I don't care about pump RPM or anything like that. It makes no difference to me. The nice thing about that test is <clears throat> once we verify that <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> this is where the awkward cut comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just start the phrase over. <laughs> the nice thing about this, once we verify that pump pressure that's dropping off, the fact that we have nine and a half amps average says this is not a power and ground problem. We do not have to crawl underneath the truck. And having the ability to do that right from the fuse box, talk about a, a time saver, you know, there it's unmatched. So here's my problem. This one is leaking a little bit. So it's gonna uh, f with you. You know what I mean? Uh, like I, I did. I did. I don't have my gauge with me. I don't care time. about a little bit of a bleed okay. down issue. We already know it's effed up. And yeah, it's bad. Okay. Oh, did you know the oil cap was missing on this? I did. I mean, that's gonna give you your idle lean condition. Yeah. Well, I will it. Yeah. PCV system. I know, but I mass I like, airflow. I like capped it off, I think, and it. Well, I mean, it didn't improve because your fuel pressure's messed I, I up. Know. I know, and I don't. Yeah. I you mean, need a pump, my, dude. I know it needs a pump. Any jump in pressure there? That's jumping up to. 55, 54, 55. I need to snap it, so I need to put the gauge that way. Don't really need the scan tool there, but 
Can you see the gauge okay? So 52. Never want to see anything like that, right? Watch again, snap the throttle. Just like Danner said. And now we know for sure he needs to put a pump in this because on this design, there's no external fuel filter. So you could, you could have, when you rev it like that, you see those drops. Never want to see drops on a rev. Absolutely our lean condition, our main one. Um, uh, but you could have a fuel filter that's plugged up. The problem with this system is it's all in the tank. Fuel filters in the tank, pumps in the tank, regulators in the tank. That sucks. No, it's good from a troubleshooting standpoint. It needs a pump. We're done. Um, we're done as far as that part goes. Long crank time here. Watch the gauge. I'm going to shut it off. Watch what happens when I shut it off. Watch how quick it drops. Like, you don't want to see that either. And on this design, again, what you worry about is, is uh, regulator or pump, but it's all in the tank, so we don't worry about it. There's your long crank time, right? For sure, pressure issue, and our amperage is good on the pump, so again, power and ground tests aren't needed, plug fuel filter not needed, any other variables not needed, regulators in the tank, filters in the tank, pumps in the tank, needs a pump. now. The idle issue, because I'm at 51 PSI, um, it could be that it needs to be at 55 or 60. I don't know the spec on this. Um, if that's the case, then fuel, fuel pressure for sure. Now, uh, the idle lean condition, also the cap is missing. So let's go under the hood. And we're in a open loop mode at the moment so i need to force a closed loop and i can't do that out here by revving it so i got to go back inside just want to make this go into closed loop it's not letting me i might have to clear these faults to show you the test we need it to be in closed loop because we need the oxygen sensors to be looked at so i can put my hand over the valve cover cap or the oil cap let me clear these What's up with this TPS code, Dan? Did you mess around with it? A TPS? Yeah, it's, it has it has a TPS fault. 121 throttle position sensor performance. It's probably dirty throttle body. Yeah, or the vacuum leak that it's comparing the throttle opening. I yes, that code kept. But when the light is the light on with it running yet? Yes, and I, I need to clear Did the you codes. Feel it popping and oh, yeah. pulling. And... Yeah, but that's typical of a pump that's failing. But Your why pump's would you clear garbage. the code? It don't do that. I don't care. I know. I don't care. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a, and it didn't do, honestly, it didn't do it to me at first until, you know, I mit, finished our test drive, but yeah, cause you, I had just cleared yeah, dude, the you're dropping like 20 to 30 PSI from where we are now. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm only trying to address the idle lean condition now. Okay, cool. Remember that TPS code. We need to look at something for that. Cause that's a separate issue too. It's a dirty throttle body. In fact, I might be able to show you guys that now. Let's see what the, if this has a learned idle control. Yeah, so I'm not seeing the a learned throttle body compensation is what I was looking for. And I don't see that, but when you see throttle p position, let's start this up. Yeah, when you see throttle position at 20% at idle with no loads, that's dirty throttle body all day long and that will set that fault code. So dirty throttle body's one, fuel pump is another. All right, under the hood. O2s. Yeah, moving up and down. If that is a good fuel pressure spec, 52 PSI roughly, at idle, we shouldn't be running as lean as we are. On the scan data, we're showing trim, total trim of like 50%, both banks. And so I believe this is part of it. I'm gonna plug this, we're gonna watch it. Immediately we're seeing a rise in O2 voltage. Now we're pegged rich and we see our fuel trim numbers coming down tremendously. And that's exactly what I wanna see as far as uh, numbers go. Let's keep watching that for a minute. So we were at like 50% before and now that's total trim and now we're roughly around 30%. And so my, my suspicions are that this number is even low 
at idle. And we know our pump's bad. Just a couple of pounds off will, will, will give us lean conditions all the time. Could this also have a vacuum leak somewhere else? Yes, it could. What answers that question is what is my exact fuel pressure? And I don't know. Watch again, I'll take my hand off this, watch the trims. O2s are gonna go lean, and then you're gonna see short term start to climb. Oil cap needs to be there. That's like a 20% correction factor with that missing at idle. But if it was only that, our long terms would have come down too, and they did not. And so I think we're low on fuel pressure even at idle. Let's see if I get a spec. Let's see, what VIN is this? VIN three. Yeah, snap on. So key on engine off with fuel pump commanded on. Fuel pressure should be 50 to 60 PSI. It says 50 to 100 PSI with fuel pump control module or 50 to 60 PSI without fuel pump control module. I didn't consider that. Whether or not this has a fuel pump control module, meaning a pulse width modulated pump. If it was a pulse width modulated pump and had a fuel pump control module, we would not be seeing this consistent of a waveform in the, in the pump pattern. They look a lot different when they're being pulse width modulated, so I'm gonna say no. And I bet you when we're done, when we're done, we're gonna see a, a higher fuel pressure than on Danner's gauge, 51 and a half. We're gonna see a higher fuel pressure than that, even at idle. I know the spec said key on engine off with pump commanded on. That's just to eliminate uh, variables of vacuum, but this is not a vacuum controlled system, so it doesn't matter. This would be the same thing if I had the, the engine off right now. We, we can try it. It's not gonna matter. So, pump commanded on, scanner, output controls, fuel pump relay, and we'll turn that on. Device control limit exceeded. I only ran it for like two freaking seconds. You stupid GM. Why is it limited? Um, it limits some tests so you don't ruin the catalytic converter with some bypass type testing, but like this one, it shouldn't be limiting that, like in that amount of time. So I can't do the tests because GM built in a stupid program for this and I can't run that pump for, you know, any significant period of time. Um, I don't like the test anyway, it's not necessary. I was only, only gonna show if the engine's off and not running if our pressure is higher, you know, that's an indication the pump can deliver more whenever there's no volume loss of the injectors and that leads to it too, but I don't care, it doesn't matter. This, this needs a pump and needs an oil cap. That's the call, that's the call on this. And I wanna run that past Danner as soon as he gets a second and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap this up and then we'll come back after the pump's put in and make sure we get some after specs. So that's why it was important that you showed the fuel pressure gauge and where we were and things like that. You need a fuel pump and an oil cap. Okay. But I, yeah, do your thing first and then I need to talk to you about a couple of variables here. And I know, I don't like the variable No, no, I think this is a solid one. I, okay. I don't think we need to worry about too much. Okay. <laughs> so while we're waiting on Danner to just fill some time and because we had a code for it, Let's look at our throttle data again. We had a TPS code. And I talked about this 20% number. We're down to 16%, which isn't bad. Let's see if it's any, any improvement if I put my hand on the oil cap. Yeah, uh-uh. So most likely this throttle body's really dirty. We can take a look. Super easy to access this. All you need is a sack. Just want to show it. I'm not going to clean it. I'll make Danner clean it. Yeah, so see the silver line in between the two groups of yeah. blackness? Yeah, all that crap needs to be cleaned out of there. That's why it's a combination of that and the missing oil cap is why it's set in that TPS performance code. Okay, you get a performance code like that. It doesn't mean you need a throttle body. So this car, uh, lots of miles, and I'm not gonna fault the customer. 
Uh, but there were a lot of things that were going wrong with this at the same time. One, oil cap's missing. Two, dropping fuel pressure. Three, he's driving it to the point where it was stalling on him, which it no longer is, and it wouldn't restart, and he had to get it jumped to get it to restart. And that's all, uh, there was a charging system problem. So Dan, my brother took care of the charging problem, and then he had this after, and he just, he missed the other aspects of what was going on because he, he just followed what the customer said. Customer mentioned the, the charging light and the battery and dumping it and all that stuff and failed to mention, oh, by the way, it has seriously low power, won't get out of its own way, falls on its face, and has long crank times, <laughs> right? Oh, and, and setting check engine light for, you know, TPS and whatever else. So we're still waiting. So I guess I could clean this damn throttle body for him. Uh, let me see if I can find what I need. All right, just using some air intake cleaner. And when you clean these, you don't want to, you don't want to push on them by hand unless you have no other options. And I've cleaned many pushing on them by hand, but if you have bi-directional controls on your scan tool, like I do, that, this is how we want to clean it, okay? So just spraying the bore. Spraying my, my toothbrush, primarily right where that silver ring was that we were seeing. Getting way back in there is not necessary. You get all the weekend warriors out there who do all their Google searches, and then they're going to comment on the video and be like, I can't believe you didn't remove that throttle body and clean that. That's a hack job. You call yourself a professional? Yeah, I am. And you unbolting the throttle body and cleaning the backside way deep inside of there that I can't get to is not necessary. That's not the part that there's an issue with. That entire intake manifold has those deposits in there. I'm not going to, what, what am I going to scrub the whole intake manifold? Because that's really what you're suggesting I do. Minimum airflow around the throttle body, around the closed throttle plate. That is what we care about. That is what we're restoring. Old toothbrush works the best I've found. And then this area of the of the throttle the area of the throttle plate right here. And on the back side if you can get to it as best you can. And we don't want to use a crap ton of this. Don't need to. Just want to make sure that I got the ring. Good. Yeah. So, and then we were at like 16% on the scan tool. That's going to start a little bit funny for a minute. Put this back on. Still going to start bad because of pressure issues. And then I got some, uh, you know, the carburetor cleaner, intake cleaner in, into the intake. So it's going to be a little bit, a little bit flooded at the moment. What we're going to see now is uh, that TPS percentage is going to be less. We we're about 16% with no loads, and now we're down to 11. So there's your actual, there's your your desired. And we'll watch this another minute. 11%, not a, a drastic uh, improvement, but I was seeing at times that throttle was up at 20% to keep it running. And that's pretty substantial. You get up in the 20% range on the TPS on these, and then you end up with the, the TPS performance code that we have. So I'm, I'm much happier with that. That'll take care of that TPS code. Danner doesn't need to worry about that. You ready for me yet? I'm ready. You're lucky you took so long because I did some of your job for you. <laughs> I cleaned the throttle body so you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Because that was the TPS code we had. Okay, makes sense. Um, your, your pressure spec says 50 to 60 yeah. without a fuel pump control module. I don't believe this has a fuel pump control module. And the reason I don't believe that is because the waveform that I have is perfect as far as normal operating pump. A fuel pump control module would be pulse width modulated and they look a lot different. Yeah. 
And this has a regulator built into the pump. Okay, good. Which verifies too, it's not, doesn't yeah. have that system. Um, amperage is average, your average amperage of this pump is nine and a half, 9.7 amps. You do not have a power and ground problem to that pump. You need a pump. Okay. Put a pump in it for sure. Yeah, because of the regulator, probably. Well, regulator and or, you know, pump itself, 230 some yeah. thousand miles, but that looks pretty damn good. Yeah. But I think, I think also, oh, let me show you this, that, well, you need an oil cap. Does that bring your trims down if you cover it? Yes, but you gotta be in closed loop to see it, and I don't know if you were when you did it. Probably not. Because um, I actually bypassed the PCB system just in case there was something wrong there. I just yeah. pinched it off, yeah. but then it starts smoking out of here because there was no PCB. Yeah. All right, watch O2s, and then fuel trims. Plug this. First thing you're gonna see, O2s go rich. Short terms are gonna come down. Right, we see in we were we yeah. were around we were around twenty percent before. Okay. So it's a, about a ten percent. Wow. Okay. Roughly ten percent. Yeah. And now the O2s are gonna go lean and in short short term is gonna climb. Wow. Okay. 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 However, we still have a major idle lean condition. Yeah. And I believe when we're done, our fuel pressure is gonna be higher than fifty one. I know the spec is fifty to sixty. And I think we're a couple PSI off, yeah. even at idle, yeah. which is why we have this. It's either that, or we also have a vacuum leak. You with me? Yeah, or clogged injectors, like a clogged rail. But you can't even... We need a pump. Yeah. <laughs> we can't even do anything. Yeah, yeah no. And, and, and with a spec of 50 to 60, and I'm on the low end of 50... And um, you can't pinch a return line because no, yes, you can't. I can't time. do any of that. Yeah, I, I don't like. I guess that's what I wanted you to see. Is yes, I get an improvement when I when I cover this. Yeah, I see that. And yes, it needs an oil cap. And I fixed the throttle body. You know, you'll be fine with that. But I don't like that I'm so lean still at idle. And if if we don't see an improvement in fuel pressure, I know we will want to snap throttle and it's really bad. I know, I saw it go down to like 30. But I clock. mean, it's possible. I mean, we could address it really right now. I have carburetor cleaner. I don't like this test and I don't normally do it, but let's just make sure that- I, We sprayed the intake. You didn't get any change in the O2s? I, I don't. Let's let that stabilize. Once my O2s are moving up and down, then we'll just kind of, it's the intake that goes on these. So you, you tell me if you see the O2s jump up. They're still, still at nine to 11% short term. It didn't no go, change in the O2s? It didn't go negative. All but. right, so then I, I'm- And I pinched off the brake booster. Put a pump in it. Put a pump in it, put an oil cap on it. I cleaned your throttle body. You took care of the guy's charging problem. We talked about this. The only thing Danner did wrong, if you want to say he did something wrong, is he didn't get all the information from the customer. Or and maybe, I, I didn't maybe. drive it a lot. I was concentrating but purely the on the voltage. But the customer never said to you that he had a low power condition. He never said it bogs down. This isn't something that just happened overnight. Yeah. That combined with no, the In all system. fairness, he did mention it running bad, but when all the lights came on and the battery light was on, I'm like, well, you got low system voltage and it's starting and you need to jump and you need to jump it to get it restarted yeah. yeah let's fix the charging problem i'm with you on that and i don't i'm not faulting you on that but this is our field this is the way it goes multiple problems dirty throttle body faulty alternator missing oil cap bad fuel pump and we're really just scratching the surface who yeah. knows what there's a stability service stability track and service abs yeah. and service tpms and you know th there's a ton of stuff and it's like communication. I think the key, and Danner would agree, and he's really good at this. This is why his parking lot's full when he's got three weeks back up. Communication is key. Danner's got the, the A game. Nah, <laughs> Danner's got the A game for that. So put a pump in this for me, and then we come back and get some after. One more time, Caleb. Oh, uh, that press. When the cooling fans turned on, the fuel pressure dropped two PSI. <laughs> so I'm. Yeah. I'm confident that that pump's putting out the maximum that it can right now. And like you said, because this is so clean looking, that pump amperage is so clean, it might just be the regulator that has failed so inside who's the tank. you pull a tank down no, on a not. rusty vehicle and just to put a regulator? Yeah, 230,000 miles too. 
But that right there is nice because I don't have to go underneath and verify powers on ground. Yeah. So do the pump. Uh, cooling fan running. Let's wait till the fan shut off and get a get an after number. So just keep watching that so we have a good before and after. Are you right at 50 right now? So we're like at 50. It's like less than what it was before. Yeah. You know, relearn this throttle body. We're at 11. Let's. What's my desired? What's my RPM? It sounds like it's idling higher now. Yeah, it's like 900 RPM. All right, so let's do an idle relearn. And that's something I didn't cover, and we should, we should have. Module setup, idle learn reset. Sometimes if you don't do this idle learn, uh, you'll have an extremely high idle for a long time. It'll eventually relearn itself, but to have it here is, is clutch. Reset. All right, and that was under module setup. Very weird place that that's where uh, they'd put it as under module setup. Let's see what our, um, what our TAC data looks like now. See if we're still at 11%. It should give me an RPM on here. It doesn't. I don't know why I don't have engine RPM here. Yeah, TPS is down to 10%. I like that. We'll let this run for a minute. We were almost 900 RPM before. Now we're down to 650. So you see the importance of an idle reset and idle relearn, and I almost missed it. And now that our RPM's a little bit lower, notice our fuel pressure is, is a little bit higher. And the reason why is it can't keep up. Higher RPM, uh, more volume loss, and that's why pressure dropped. Shouldn't do that. This is a fuel pressure issue all day long. Even, the, even though we're lean at idle, this is still a fuel pressure issue. Of course it needs an oil cap too, but we'll get you guys an after. As soon as we get this oil cap changed, get the pump put in it, we'll get you guys an after and we'll come back to it. Forced open loop condition. It's not giving it's enough not fat fuel. It's not fat in the injector pulse. I know that much. Okay. So you were in here revving it when it was in a forced open loop mode with low fuel pressure. It's popping. Yeah. Then you clear the codes, and then you revved it, and the popping went away because you're getting more pulse width on the injector. And that kind of fits because, like, like when we were done with the charging system, you know, I cleared the codes because of all the stuff that was in there yeah. anyway. Because I had battery voltage codes sure. in other modules, you right. know, low voltage and ABS, all kind of stuff cleared all them and he drove it and he's like, oh, it's running great. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's quit and then it starts, and we couldn't even give it gas. Yeah. Like, it wouldn't even move. I'm yeah. like, I'm stuck. You know, it was yeah. like, it was like 5.30 at night. I'm waiting for Lou to drop his toolbox off on Friday. And I'm like, gonna, thinking I'm going to be walking from over yeah, there right? because it just instantly starts popping. How weird and, though, like he had to have been fighting that for a while. And then his charging system giving him crap. Then he, you know, it, I mean, I, he told me the battery light was on. He said he had to jump it, but I've had people say that they thought they had to jump it because it just cranked and didn't start. But then when he came in the day- but his battery light was on yeah. when, when it was running and he had low voltage and it wasn't yeah. charging. But when he, so. Yeah, but when he came in and he went to go start it and it wouldn't start, he's like, not that, hold on a second. And he just kept trying and when it started, uh, so he knows he has this problem. That's been there for a while. He's like, oh, it's not that. I'm like, oh, okay. Yes, it was you know, that. Like, yeah. <laughs>